might be able to throw MYM off the game because they were a team who loved the control. And I think Shaq is a man who could possibly break that with his uh, with his aggression. But we're going to get into the bands and the picks, and they're coming thick and fast, or thick and thin, uh, as some other people like to say. So let's get into them. Shen, Elise, and Vayne band out here for EG. New, new, uh, new, new, not new, new. Uh, Zach and, well, the third one's going to come here in a second. I'm waiting for you to guess it right now. Could be a quite a few ch uh, different champions, obviously. I mean, we know Frogging played a, a lot of different things, like Jace. Still left open right now. We saw him uh, used by Ocelot yesterday, or just earlier today. What am I talking about yesterday? Just in the game previously, and did really well on him, but it's not going to be the final bin. Twisted Fate will be, though. And Malphite locked in here for Wicked. We saw him yesterday playing that Renekton again. Uh, he was practicing that for pretty much the whole day before it, and he said to me, Zach, Renekton, Malphite, my three champions right now. Zach, of course, banned out for this one, deciding to go for Malphite as their first pick. <laughs> that moment when the enemy team bans out Zach, Renekton, Malphite, what he's going to play is going to blow everyone's mind. I think the days of just <laughs> banning out Wicked are a little bit over yeah, uh, a little bit, now, yeah. though. That's but the problem. You know, it was always banning Relia against EG, but obviously that's not quite the same anymore. So what are Meet Your Makers going to go for here, first of all? You know, you look at the likes of Elise being banned out, of Shen being banned out. They're two champions which Meet Your Makers love to play. Makata with Shen in the jungle. We've seen Kubon in the top lane. Elise, of course, is um, Kubon's most picked jo uh, champion in the top lane, so it's going to have to be something different this time around. It seems like they want to get the support in there and the Lissandra that came through. Okay, so it looks like Kuban will potentially be playing that Lissandra. Um, Charu has picked Orianna both games uh, over this weekend, so I wouldn't be surprised if they go for that. Oh, I thought that was locked in already. Oh, the color of the screen messed me up. I was like, oh my god, Karma. But no, it doesn't get locked in, but the whole Lissandra Nami combo, it's going to be very interesting to see how that necessarily works out. I mean, obviously, Lissandra can go in, follow that up with that Nami tidal wave, and it kind of keeps you see for quite a while, but I was thinking maybe Evil Geniuses, if you pair Orianna up with Malphite, we've seen how strong that ball delivery system can be, but with Jace left open, Froggen, he's looking for that one. Yeah, I mean, Anivia and Lux, two champions which everyone knows Froggen for, he's not won a single game out of five with them, <laughs> however, Jace he's got a 100% win ratio with, and we've seen in that last game how Ocelot brought Jace to the table, and I was actually talking to Hercubot outside, and he said, Ocelot hasn't played Jace in any scrims for about a month. Uh, so, you know, that was an interesting fact to come out of the SK camp, but it worked for them. And Froggen is a man who, as I said, two games played so far with Jace, won them both. They're going to take Jarvan the fourth as well, which is Snoopy's most picked jungler so far this season. Yeah, I mean, Jarvan overall is just a very strong jungler. It gives you the opportunity when you're not very aggressive to play aggressive because of the, op or because of the options to go in through different paths, uh, obviously with the... the Flag toss Q combo. I can't remember the, even the letters they, that they stand for. Um, so he's going to be playing that one. I'm curious to see how well he's going to be ganking because in terms of other lanes right now, there's no real CC for him to get like a guaranteed kind of gank off or how uh, Mutual Makers is going to respond to having this Jarvan picked up. And it looks like looks like Char is going to go for like one of his comfort champions. I mean, Ari, Orion, it's, it's going to be one of those two usually. Yeah, and you're exactly right with that. I mean, Twist of Fate, Ari and Orianna, are basically the three champions that he's gone to throughout the summer split right now. Seems like it will be that Ari and of course running teleport. We heard a little bit about that. Super Saiyan, just annoying to play against. Uh, and I can quite well imagine that it is. Um, Makata here hovering over Nautilus. That's another big favorite of his. Okay, yeah, I mean, I've, I, okay, I remember back in the promotion term, he played a lot of Shen, and then he started bringing Nautilus back to the table, and it really worked out well. But he hasn't done anything in my head that really wows me or amazes me with it. But I'm curious to see if this game he might make that happen, because he has so many different lanes to visit. I mean, you have a charm out of Ari, you have uh, the lockdown out of Lissandra, you have the bubble out of Nami, not to mention the speed up. Like, you pretty much have some guaranteed lanes that you can gank and pull something amazing out of his hat. Um, so I'm gonna just really want to see how well that works out. Also, Char with the Ari, the teleport, it can be, yeah, just like I said, very, very annoying. And we've seen him work with that really well. And as you see on EG's side, we already have those champions locked in. Yeah, Varus and Thresh going to be locked in. So Krepo once again bringing this Thresh to the table. Not being super amazing for him, uh, I think we can safely say here in the uh, summer split. Uh, played five games, won two of them. Uh, and the sim similar can be said for Yellow Pete. He's played a lot of Varus, but not really got the win ratio with that one as well. However, you know, we know what those two can bring to the table, both in the early and the late game. Yeah, Krepo, he's not looking like the Thresh Prince like he did last split. And it just kind of, I'm not sure exactly why, but the whole combo they have going on within their team, you know, the Malfa initiate, follow the Cataclysm, Chain of Corruption, they're not going to be able to escape that one. Even throwing the box on top of that so you're hoping to really control them really lock them down the downside is you already have a Sondra and Ari picked 
so they're going to be able to escape from you pretty much right away. So it's kind of tough, but if Evil Jesus gets the ball rolling very early on, if Froggen has the game on this Jace that he's had in the past, then he can completely destroy Chara Middle. And speaking of being able to get away, Tristana locked in here. <laughs> they were uh, actually hovering over Ezreal for a little while, but Tristana couldn't come out here for Mackler. And that's another champion similar to, you know, the Vayne and the Cogmore that we used to see him running a lot as more in the last week or so come back into his champion pool as meet your makers have really looked towards late game and how they can control that one. Tristana going to offer similar here. Yeah, definitely. And not to mention the ultimate on Tristana. You have an escape yourself, but then you have a second one paired in with the explosive shot to knock whoever away, most likely Jace or even Malphite to uh, stop the attack speed slow. But as we already are seeing on both sides right now, so we have a teleport on meet your maker side, we have a teleport on EG side, and Wicked. I still haven't fully figured out his use of teleport. You know, there's like, in my head, there's like two kinds. There's one that likes to be really aggressive early on, likes to provide some ganks, and there's one, um, the, or the other style is to use it late game, just to kind of go for some split pushing. So, Wicked, I really want to see, how are you going to use this teleport? He's used it over this weekend and done fairly well, but it's going to come down to, like, can you help shut down these other lanes? How, can you help get Froggen and Yellow Pete rolling? Well, one thing that we have to say before we get into this game is happy birthday to Makata. He's actually turning 25 here today. A little bit older than Shaka turned uh, <laughs> on Thursday. <laughs> Just a few years uh, difference on that one. Actually, eight years between them. That sounds that sounds pretty incredible, to be honest. But uh, yeah, there's a man on your screen, birthday boy. And a win here today would certainly be a nice present for him. Yes, it would. And if, if only his team can help him get that, that'd be like, all right, there's your birthday present. We don't have to buy you anything. We're happy with that one. But he's got a lo lot of work cut out for him because Evil Geniuses, with Shaka coming to the team, they have a new life within them. And it's all about, can he kind of break their spirits maybe in this game and with Snoopy in the lineup I mean he wants to show everyone that he's still valid like he's still viable to and an asset to Evil Geniuses and this is his game to prove it yeah I think there will be a lot of pressure on Snoopy's shoulders I mean he's got big broad Scottish shoulders with a lot of experience behind him he's, he's no stranger to high pressure scenarios but certainly we'll be feeling it in this one so we're in game EG versus meet your makers our penultimate game of week six here in Tenerife Let's see how things are going to go down. And some of the items at the start there, door and shield start coming out there for Charu. So he wants to be able to basically protect himself in this early game up against the Jace. Yeah, we've seen a lot of mid laners building this item as their first kind of thing, just to kind of deal with the early game harass that a lot of AD carries or a lot of uh, range champions can use middle lane. So it's going to work out for him quite well. It's going to build into a little bit of AP after that, after that, obviously. But it's all about that transition. Can you withstand this harass that Froggen can put out against you within the first six levels? And and then be able to turn it around right after that. So from the early start from this one, it looks like we possibly could be seeing a, a late invade uh, from EG, both uh, the, you know, the, the duo lane and Wicked are in the bottom side. As I say, that Wicked is actually going to be teleporting back. So uh, we are certainly going to be seeing something a little bit different here, I think, from EG as Jace is in that top lane right now as well. Hmm. Okay, so now he's coming back down. Yeah, it's going to be all normal. I'll just, just take all that back. It looks like he was just holding on to it for vision right there. Wicked will be going top lane, but with the position of Meteor Makers, it looks like Tristana and Nami will be his opponent up there, and it's going to be a little bit tough for him to deal with, but I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking the same thing. With the ward coverage that Evil Geniuses currently have down, there is a possibility of invading, but it looks like I'm not going to go for that. And actually, we're going to see LP and Krepo take these double golems. So we're going to try to get that early level advantage against uh, Kub on bottom and maybe pressure against this. Because if he gets hooked, that's a lot of damage he's going to be forced to take. Well, Snoopy going to have the help here. That was a little bit early there from Froggen. <laughs> not quite timing it down with the shock blast to get the start off. But, you know, it's about style points or something similar to that, possibly. Uh, Wicked there just went to the top lane. He's like, nope. Going to have to walk around from that one, sadly, as Nami in the brush there to uh, give him a bit of harassment. Makata on the other side, uh, side starting off on his blue buff. Kuban's going to have to come back here because Makata doesn't want to have to use that smite and go too low with this one. He will hit level two with that. So we're going to get 2v1 lanes here with Tristan and Nami against Malphite. We've just seen that bubbled up. And in that bottom lane, Lissandra versus Varus Thresh. So looking at how these lanes are kind of going to match up in terms of that top and bottom, I think that Meet Your Makers has the advantage in this situation because just in terms of wave clear, where if you shove a giant wave at Kuban, his Q can just get through every single one of them, do quite a bit of damage, and he should be able to clear the waves with that whole combo that he has with that QW. But Wicked, on the other hand, he can be harassed quite a bit from range um, by the E out of Tristana, not to mention uh, Nami is using her auto attacks and the bubbles. So 
I think Evil Geniuses, they kind of want to get out of this laning phase fast, maybe take that turret down relatively quick, and maybe just give Froggen that chance to get really strong. So Snoopy right now is counter jungling. Not something that we say too often when we talk about Snoopy, that has to be said here. He's going to be smiting away that Wraith and actually he's going to be dropping back down here. So they may end up trying to push this turret for a three-man gank and Snoopy comes around in towards this tri-bush. Oh, this is going to be very bad for Kubani. He's going to have to back away or he's going to take the death here. Yeah, they're going to go for this one here. He is only just hit level two. Will he be able to escape this one? The Ice Claw comes out. Well, first blood will already land. Charu tried to get down, down there with a the teleport, but he was just too slow. And that early impact on the game from Snoopy working out brilliantly for EG. And one thing that was really bad for Charu is the fact that he did go for that and now he oh. might die here. Yeah, he needs to be really careful. Look at Snoopy. Level three going to slide in there. Takes a sorry aggro. Exhaust goes down. Double kill. Technically Coming out here for Yellow Pete, has to flash away from the turret. I'm not sure if you needed barrier as well after that, but better safe than sorry. Two kills in less than two minutes in this bottom lane. Snoopy doing the work. And Joe, there's something that we completely forgot about or didn't even mention. The fact of having a competing jungler in your own team might make you play better. It's like, oh, well, maybe yeah. he can teach me something that I didn't know. I can teach him something. And the fact that he's doing good means that I have to step up and play well. And right now, with how snoopy has been going, he's been really stepping up. Well, that's the thing. I mean, look at traditional sports. The roster is not just the men on the on on the on the field, you know. Yeah, a football team that's having 11 guys will often have a 30-man squad. And that's <laughs> the thing. It's all about competition, not just against opposite numbers, but within the team as well. And this could certainly bring out the best from both Shaka and Snoopy with this arrangement that they've got going on. So far, certainly working out in this game. Snoopy got two assists to his name. He's got a level over Makata. Charu's now having problems because he spent time in that bottom lane, died in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, Froggen was farming to his heart's content in this mid lane. And the thing is, Yellow Pete, who we never see get kills early on or never see play super aggressive, has the opportunity to do it now. He has those two uh, two kills. He has that build to Cutlass. And now Kuban sitting at level two. He is he's going to be hurting quite a bit. I'm curious, is Snoopy going to gank him even more? As we do see him put a ward down where Mikado is going to be walking over. Right now, I mean, EG, they're looking like a completely different team. Just just from yesterday, just from Shaka on the team and then having Snoopy on the team, they look like compl uh, two completely different uh, lineups. And there you'll see the statistic for Snoopy. Jarvan, the four, <laughs> five picks with a 60% win ratio. I chose to ignore that one. Uh, <laughs> that <is> so bad. <laughs> two different lineups. Duh, they have another guy. As EG coming in there onto that one. Kubon having the protection of Makata, funnily enough, who's got a level on him right now. That's the solo lane who's lower than the... Uh, uh, the jungler here for Meet Your Makers certainly not in the best of positions from this start and we've said it time and time again that uh, the MYM are a team that if they don't get control of a game more so than other teams they really struggle when it moves into the mid and late game yeah they have and I, I talked to their manager about that a little bit and he said they're actually trying to work on changing their strategy up trying to adapt it a little bit more because they realize we can't count on this every single time and you know I've seen a little hints here and there of mutual makers doing that but you know six weeks in you got to make that change quick or you're just not going to be able to get into the playoffs where meet your makers started off week number one in second place and have now fallen down to the bottom Snoopy there coming up to this top lane and well, they actually backed away from that one. He's going to catch sight of Makata here doing those wraiths as he does put the ping down. Not sure that they'd really be able to grab a kill on him, but Kubon in the bottom lane. He is finished off here. Not quite sure if there was a hook involved in that one. Just the fact that the positioning, I would assume that Krepo hooked him in there for the kill. And that leaves Yellow Pete at 3-0-0. Got the Cutlass in there. Got himself a Doran's play. They're flying high right now. And the thing is, even with these kills, he's keeping up and surpassing right now Macro and CS. But here comes Snoopy on Acharu. That one was a little bit strange there. Snoopy actually getting charmed in towards the turret. Didn't quite get the knock up. And Charu was able to back away, but you know, it's pressure. That's all that they need to be putting down right now. It's again, Froggen putting damage on Charu. Are they going to go wandering for this one? Look at this bottom lane. The turret is already down to less than half HP. Let's have a look at the mid lane as Charu was just trying to uh, get back. I think Froggen gave him another shot blast there just to stop that one from happening as the first turret of the game goes down. Seven and a half minutes in. EG, 3-0 open kills, 10.8 to 7.9 thousand gold. This, they look like a different team with a different lineup. <laughs> but they do have like a 3,000 gold lead here, seven and a half minutes in. That's such a strong start. And now they're even counter jungling with their bottom lane because of how they set up these lanes. And they're going to take this away. And that's going to hurt Charu even more, who's already having such a tough time. Well, we know where they're going next here. Meet your makers nowhere near 
the vicinity of Dragon. And EG are going to say thank you very much. That's going to be even more gold for us. And Meet Your Makers can't do a sausage about that one. Top lane, bit of a push coming in there as well. Wicked. That's a very English term, yeah, sorry. Like, I've never heard of that before. <laughs> Wicked in the top lane, 33 to 9 in the lead. And he's not really doing anything. He's Malphite, he's got a chain vest, and he's just last hitting where he can underneath his turret. Makla himself is ahead in CS, but he's three kills behind that of Yellow Pete. So far, the plan working out as EG send their double lane to the middle. And it looks like Yellow Pete will have his Blade of the Rune King done whenever he does decide to back away. Charo is going to return the lane here, dodge a hook barely but does have that Phoenix Codex, it does have that Doran's Ring, so he has a little bit of ability power. But Makata, he's having a tough time here. He's level six. I mean, he's trying to form up red, and not really a lot's happening currently for them. And look at that. We well, saw Lydic having to come down to defend this middle lane. He knows that Tristan's going to be fine up there at the top and can leave him alone to uh, quite happily farm things away from that stage. So let's have a look at some early items because because of this crazy start, less than 10 minutes in, with so much happening, we've got some items coming in already. That T already stacking up for Frog, and he's got the Brutalizer in as well, and we can see what that's doing to Charu, who himself, Phoenix Codex, that shield start, got the ring in there as well as the Boots of Speed. The thing is, look... Uh yeah, so we look at these items, and right now, Yellow P.E. has like, pretty much 2,000 gold. Yeah, he does have 2,000 gold when he decides to go back with those boots of speed. It's really going to help out quite a bit. And you look at the level difference just between these top laners of Wicked. He's level 8 to Kuban, who's level 5. And even in CS, Wicked is actually, like, right on the heels of Mackler in terms of that when he's in a 1v2 lane. That is just ridiculous. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff here. As we see, lots of wards going down. Media makers themselves throwing a lot there. They realize that they need to keep control as Wicked here might be in a bit of trouble. He's just going to try and dodge away from the ball as he goes straight in there. Actually uses, in the end, that flash to get away from it. Didn't want to even risk anything in that top lane. He unfortunately didn't have that stop of force available since he did use it a little bit earlier. But right now, Evil Geniuses, with that first turret down, with that first turret, or Dragon in their favor, they're starting to roam around a little bit. As you're seeing, Yellow Pete and Crepo, they're grouping up middle. They want to apply some pressure here, and because of that, Makata, he just has to sit middle and kind of absorb this experience. He cannot gain top lane. He cannot stop winning from farming he up. Ne he needs to stay there. There's four men coming in from Evil Geniuses. They have to defend this turret. They can't afford to let a mid turret go down this early on. You can see that both Tristana and, uh, and Nami are coming down from this top side of things. EG going to be pressing on that poke damage already coming out from Jace, causing them a few issues. Now, now this is a great start for EG. We know them as a team that generally struggle to Cheering, uh, to, to switch that early game lead to the mid game and finish things off before, you know, 45, 50 minutes. And I'm wondering if, you know, if this has changed so much from what we're used to seeing from them, how having, you know, the likes of N-Rated in there, he mentioned calls were a big thing that he's changed on his first few days here with a lineup. And the calls from, from what we can see from the outside so far look great as Charu comes in on the backside with a teleport. Crepo thrashes away as him, he gets charmed in there, but honestly, Charu can't do all that much about about that one, the hook doesn't quite land onto him, and EG just putting down damage left, right, and center with a shot blast with that piercing arrow. I think, as you heard Enrita talking earlier when Demon and Freak were interviewing him, he said that he feels really good for this game. He feels very confident that they know what to do to beat them, and EG, they show nothing but that right now, but here comes an engage out of Meteor Makers, and if anything, that was just a, a deterrent trying to keep them away from their own turret. Depth charge, but he can't follow it through. He's already been poked so low here by both Jace and Varus that they may have to just release full control and there we see it again shot blast going straight through the pack hitting Kuban who's already down to half HP and this is just a matter of time before EG surely siege straight through and take turret number two and the important thing is is right now Evil Geniuses they're out leveling MYM as we do see the, oh. Oh, the chain corruption just barely oh Charo just dodged it pretty much it wasn't even a miss it was just Taro being a little bit quicker but we're seeing EG they're pretty much higher levels they're higher farm they have better items and with them grouped up like this, Meech Makers doesn't have the opportunity to get Kuban farmed up to get some items. They don't have the opportunity for Charu to kind of get ahead at all. And it's such a fantastic job by EG. Well, as you can see, we do have a small pause from this one. We'll see if we can uh, figure out exactly what the problem seems to be. MYM. I've been not really talking to them, so it doesn't seem to be a problem there. Seems more likely with uh, Crepo there on the end. Just judging by what we're seeing, of course, we'll uh, be right on top of this one just to make sure that everything gets fixed up here quickly. And now, a pause in the game for EG. 
probably not what they were wanting just with the fact that they're doing so well right now it gives meet your makers uh, you know a chance to think not talk because they're not allowed to actually talk during these pauses well, certainly they shouldn't be talking certainly about the game <laughs> i think they're allowed to talk about the weather but not about the game well, hopefully, hopefully they're not, because Froggen's probably like had enough with that, with the sunburn that he currently has on him right now. But yeah, I mean, I like how you pointed out, this is not the position EG wants to be in in terms of a pause coming out, because the momentum you get, like the opportunity of making it so Meteor Makers can't sit there and regroup and think, what do we need to do next? Now they, they at least have the opportunity to think about it, and they can talk about it when the game starts back up. So it's a little bit of a hindrance to Evil Geniuses, but maybe on the other side, it gives them that, that opportunity as well to say, all right, we have a second to slow down. Where do we want to go next? So it does seem to be with uh, Crepo. Apparently he's got some issues with his game right now. Has already uh, left the game, so he should be coming back in here in just a second. What would it be for an EG game without a pause? <laughs> just going to throw that one out there again. I don't think it would be EG. I'm not sure what it is that, that seems to affect them. It's the, it's the electricity running through their bodies or something. I don't know what Maybe it the is. the game's like, whoa, 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 we're not used to EG being this far ahead this early on. We need to, <laughs> something's something got to be wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do a pause. Uh, but no, uh, obviously they just seem to be a little bit unlucky on that front, but they're on top of it. Crepo is reconnecting to the game, so we should be getting things back underway. Gives us a little bit of time to retake stock of the game, and I'll run you through that here with the goal, first of all. 4,000 that they have in the lead at 12 minutes, 11 seconds in. 3-0 in kills. 1-0 up in turrets. That may well be two here shortly. Of course, they were sieging up on the outer middle turret. You know, I'm trying to think back. What initially caused all this to break out? And obviously, most people say, oh, stupid. You know, he ganked bottom, got two kills. But the, the one thing that I noticed right off the bat was, did you see, remember, Makati was taking his blue buff. Kuban came up. Helped him out, obviously, in the beginning. Then he went to lane, and then he's like, wait, I need to go back and help him more. So he went back, helped him even more. And the thing was, Snoopy had both his buffs and was already in position to gank by the time Makati got his red buff. And I'm not sure exactly what kind of caused that in the beginning because Makati was very slow with his blue, but that is really unfortunate, and that kind of might have been the catalyst to this whole thing because he might have gone bottom and just, uh, just to make sure to protect Kuban, and in the end, it might have just snowballed out of their favor. Well, we can look at it a different way as well. The fact that Kuban left came back to help out with the blue because he realized that Makati was maybe getting a bit low for the rest of his path mm -hmm. on that first run. And with that, Kuban actually got to the lane later, didn't hit level 2 until Snoopy was right on top of him. He saw him try to get out with the claw, but it was too late. If he'd have hit, if he'd have hit level 2 a little bit earlier than that, he would have had the claw still available. Yeah, very true. And I mean, hindsight's always 2020, but that's how like intricate this game can be just from the get-go. One smallest thing, like the butterfly effect, can set off an entire chain of events that can put you behind or obviously put you ahead, which currently in Evil Geniuses are right now. And I gotta give him credit. I mean, we never see dives like that. And, and it was funny because we talked to Frog and um, when we first got here and he said, we were like, you know, tell us about Shocker. And, he's, and he says, he dives. He actually bought him goggles um, at, at the mall the other day to give him, uh, give to him as a present, like welcome into the team because he likes to dive quite a bit. And Snoopy kind of took a page out of his book. Did he get goggles as well? There were pink goggles. No, pink Froggen goggles. didn't get any though. That that would be. Uh, I, think, <laughs> I think Froggen should have picked up some sunscreen while they were at it there as well. <laughs> you see the EG guys there. Spirits seem high in the team, that's for sure. You wicked. He's not doing his drumming that he normally Middle, does. Yeah, he's usually drumming impatient to uh, get things back underway. Apparently Crepo is now reconnecting to the game once again, so we shouldn't be too far away from going live once again here in our third game of the day. Yeah, and I mean, we still have another game coming up right after this. Of course, it will be Alternate versus Lemon Dogs. And yeah. with Alternate at the top of the table, well, not top of the table anymore, but with Lemon Dogs approaching the top of the table, it's such a big game for them to win when the standings are still this close currently. Yeah, the, the strange thing is, and probably the great thing here as well, is that uh, if these games go a certain way, we could have a five team tie at the top of the league like that is strange five <laughs> five out of eight teams at the top of the table you, you imagine it like shouldn't happen but that's just how good each team is that's how each day can really affect how you play in terms of one day you can beat a team that you normally couldn't beat or or whatever but looks like well, the game it could only be a four team tie now because nip of course lost their last game they were the they were the one cog in this whole uh, thing that could have made it five so four teams i'll be corrected on that one as we go through the day but we are back in game and as we can see evil geniuses still hanging around here 
for this middle outer turret. They're just ignoring the other lanes, let's take mid. Yeah, and they should be able to take it for free because remember yep. Mikata he uses depth charge a little bit earlier on. I believe it's still on cooldown even though you see it off cooldown currently. But actually it might be up either way. I'm pretty sure it is on cooldown currently though. But anyways, so Evil Geniuses, after taking the blue buff away from Nature Makers, they're actually heading bottom right now and they might be able to get an inner turret. They're setting up to pretty much stop this wave from coming and to go for a push here. So some of the differences that we've seen from other teams, they've given up early turrets, but on the other side of things, they've been able to pick up kills or get in there for dragons as well. Right. And that's what's kept these games equal. Right now, EG have the turrets, they have the dragons, and they have the kills. Yeah, that was the problem. Lemon Dogs had versus Gambit. That was the problem NIP had versus SK, is they can take those turrets, but what do you do after that? And if you don't keep that aggression rolling, if you don't keep that pressure, if you take your foot off the pedal for one second, the other team finally gets their, their hand in, in the crack to really kind of get their grip. Wicked right now is up in this uh, top lane. Has Charu going to come across here? Is he going to go for the charm on this one? Wicked is, I don't know, he's, he's got that giant belt in there. He's got boots of speed. I don't see Charu being able to really lock him down from that one. And as such, just lets him walk away from that. Not easy to remove the rock from the top lane. Yeah, especially without an ignite. I mean, you, you kind of need that to kill a Malphite. And he obviously doesn't have the damage just yet, but he does have sword boots. So he has a little bit of penetration. But Evil Jinx says, where are they going to go after this? They just got all this aggression. They get all of this gold. They have quite a few items completed with the uh, Man Immune done for Frog. And his damage is really going to be amplified quite soon. And it looks like Mitchell Makers, they kind of want to set up for Dragon here. Five seconds for Dragon to come up. EG have taken the last couple, but MYM signaling here that they actually want to get in there for this one, but it didn't quite work out for them in the end. We see them uh, putting some walls there and actually backing away from that. And I don't think they can really challenge. I mean, we've got Yellow Pete, who's already got that Blade of the Ruin King in there, finishes a Sunfire Cape on Wicked. There's that uh, Man Immune already done for Froggen as well. And I don't think they can actually compete with them right now if it were to come to a five-on-five five encounter down by the Dragon. The thing is, uh, Avaris, even if you didn't have three kills over this Tristana right now, would be stronger. So you do see a pole land onto Makata right here, and they're actually going to go in for yeah, it. Yeah, Chain of Corruption coming in there as well. Makata's a dead man. Snoopy will pick up that one, and they are going to go back towards the Dragon. I can assure you it is there, and that'll be finished off here in just a little while. And that's going to bring EG's lead even bigger at this point. Charu is pushing the top lane. There is a dragon. He's back. And he's going to get smited down. That will be 21 to 16 and a half thousand gold. Charu did take that turret. Yeah, so he's got something out of nothing here. And Charu he's actually needs to be a little bit careful. He does have his ultimate, does have his flash, so he should be able to escape this. Yeah, no real problem for him. Wicked, I think, was just trying to bully him around a bit. It's Kubon. Half health taken there from the shock blast from Wicked. That is dangerous times for Kubon, who is behind. Triple Doran's ring, that's a telltale sign that he's struggling right now. Exactly, and it's definitely not something you want to build. You need to go towards those bigger items, especially that Zonia's when you're kind of, you're not the initiate for your team, but you're pretty damn close to it for him, and you kind of need the backup of your team. But then again, to me, like Lissandra, once she falls behind, and she can't all of a sudden just spike up and farm, she kind of stays behind. Uh, the Tristana I was trying to touch on earlier is that even without these three kills, Yellow Pete would still be stronger than Tristana at this point in the game, just because Vara, Varus does more damage in this Trist, but can't compete, obviously, as the game goes into that late game phase. He's going to try, though, at 3-0-1 if those kills <laughs> keep racking up for him. Makla heading the CS ever so slightly. Got himself that BF Sword and a Vamp Scepter in there. As Froggen will once again be getting this blue buff. So, 16 and a half minutes, let's call it, into this game. We can see a lot of wards down still. A couple of pinks from EG on the bottom side. Crepo, you just saw him putting some down around that Baron area as well. And right now, Yellow Pete and Charu going head to head. Piercing Arrow did connect onto Charu there and took him low, but using his ultimate to just dash away from any danger. Still ultimate down for him. Yellow Pete, his was just coming up. He didn't even get to use it right there. And they're going to go back to pushing bottom. They're going for like a tri lane split or a tri lane push here as they just have Snoopy Frog in middle. They have, obviously, as you see, Yellow Pete and Crepo bottom. And then Wicked, who is a big raw, can't be moved in that top lane. And he's trudging his way down. I always find that Malphite walks a little bit like Wicked as well. Got this kind of swipe <laughs> thing going on. He looks like he's out of control the of his arms. The beast of a man that he is. Uh, and he's just going to go 
Now, like I said, trotting on down to the bottom lane. Inner turret going to be taking some pressure. There's actually two waves of minions coming up from this one as that piercing arrow just clips Charu on his way away from that one. As here comes the chain of corruption. Snoopy diving into the middle. The boxer's down. Wicked gets one. Oh, what a cataclysm. Makata does manage to get himself out. Kubon trapped in there. Froggen going to go down. So that's a one for one right now. EG decide to disengage and get out. Yeah, that was all Lipic right there. With the cataclysm coming in from Snoopy, he knocked them pretty much all up and pretty much stopped that engage from keeping to get out of their hands. And that's exactly what they needed. They defended the turret. They got one kill. They're starting to claw their way back in a little bit. And more importantly, that kill went over to Kuban, who needed it desperately. And they, they need more kills right now. That's the thing. Like Just these, these one for one trades is something that Meteor Makers probably not unhappy about, depending on obviously where they're getting spread around. As we said, Kuban fell behind early on, died twice early on after that level 3 uh, kill and uh, the, the kill straight afterwards from Yellow Pete and Crepo teaming up there, forced to go into that triple door and drink. So any extra cash that he can get at this stage of the game is a massive help to him. Yeah, and, and the problem is that I don't think Unless Evil Genius makes a big mistake in terms of just gets caught out, by, or you know, one person gets caught out completely, I don't think Meech Makers can really get these kills in a 5 on 5 fight as long as Evil Genius plays the fight how they want to. But then again, I mean, anything can really happen. We've seen some big plays come out of both teams here, and Frog, and he's trying to go for Charu. I don't know if he can pick up the kill, so Charu does have his ultimate available. Oh, he's going to burst wow. him down to a third of his health. There is the ultimate use, but Froggen's going to have that acceleration gate up soon here. We see Charu go over the side, not quite landing that shock blast. That may just throw Froggen off here in terms of positioning. Yep, that sneaky fox, being as sneaky as a fox as you'd expect, getting around. And Froggen just headed back from that one. Charu does escape with his life, uh, life, but you see the danger there. Massive burst. EG now going in for another turret. Yeah, the damage is done. They got him out of lane, but still in the meantime, Mackler, he's pushing middle right here, and they're pretty much making Evil Genius trade one for one in turrets. You do have a teleport coming in from Wicked. He's trying to get behind someone, and he actually, I don't think he was. No, he was spotted as pings are coming down onto him, but they're not stopping. They're going for this turret as well. Mackler's taken the outer middle turret, but he's going to have to move here because they need to try and defend the inner turret on that top lane. They've actually backed off knowing that Mackler isn't going to be there anytime soon. EG will take this one. Can't really call it for free because they've lost their outer middle turret as well as MYM just sit on the steps and they're going to ping down because Macklin's still going. And he is. He doesn't really have any items built up, but still, you see the damage coming out of that Tristan, taking it down about half health here. You know, Genius says, actually, we do see pings from Meteor Makers going on in Baron. Not sure exactly where EG is going. And you can tell just from the ward coverage that EG has in the jungle of Meteor Makers on that top side where MYM, they boarded bottom just to stop that push onto the bottom inner turret. But then e Evil Genius said, hey, we'll just switch it up. We'll go top lane, and you won't really have anything prepared for that. So, Muramana is now stacked up for Wicked. That's 20 minutes into the game right now. Uh, not for Wicked, sorry, for Froggen. Wicked got that Negatron cloak, because I was kind of looking, in two, Negatron cloak. <laughs> looking <laughs> in two places at once, threw my brain off. <laughs> uh, and that will be turned into a spirit visage on this uh, trip home. And we can compare him with Kuon, 125 to 83 CS. That is phenomenal from Wicked. Yeah, I think the problem is that we can't really compare them, because well, yeah. Wicked's so far ahead at this point. And the thing is, we saw Wicked, I believe it was in day number one, when he outfarmed his top laner quite heavily. He had the highest CS in the game in that one, and he's been doing a phenomenal job, even though He's made it very vocal that he doesn't... He plays Malphite to go with the team composition of Evil Geniuses, but he's really been practicing it quite a bit, and he's been doing phenomenally with it. And that's the thing. It's not always the champion that you maybe enjoy playing the most that fits best to your team composition. Sometimes you've got to take one for the team. We can see that 75% pick and win ratio, or kicks and win ratio, as we are actually showing you. Uh, but EG now coming down towards Dragon, which is now going to be live. Although, Media Makers, they're coming in as well. They might want to challenge here. And this is going to be a very deciding move for MYM if they do end up going for this. Like, this could be a huge comeback for them, or it could be the huge downfall that might end up losing them this game because they don't want to get engaged upon. And the thing is, Wicked, he has his ultimate available. You look at where Yellow Pete is on the other side of that Dragon Pit. He's trying to get positioned to make a Chain of Corruption land. Krepo, if you land the hook on anyone, you know you can blow them up as long as Froggen comes down to help. He's just pushing that wave out. He doesn't want anything going back onto their side of the map. And it's just a case of who makes a false move here. It's probably going to be a false move. Charu's actually gone. And EG is saying, look, guys, they pushed down to the middle lane. We've com complete control of the jungle right now. We've got a positional advantage. Let's go for it. Yeah, and sh they should be able to take this. Krepo's actually still behind them right now, clearing out some words just to make it so Charu can't teleport in behind it. But here comes Meteor Makers. 
And EG, they just disengage. They went in for Crepo there. They're going to come in a bit split from this one. Varus and Jace are in the wrong position for this fight. Wicked, though, right at the front of them. We see Froggen going on towards Libic. There's a chain of corruption coming on to Makata. Froggen flashes away. Crepo getting oh. caught here by Charu, but he lands the hook. That is a dead Charu right now. The Snoopy turns off the Cataclysm, and they turn and burn and try and pick up Meet Your Makers. And right now, Charu's used six or three of his nine lives, and they're going to push onto this turret. The thing is, oh. he's behind... He's He's a little bit behind. His items are really strong right now because he has that DFG, but him he'll, him alone cannot burst anyone down. He needs the help of Kubon. He needs that control of Kubon that he provides into these fights as well as Libic. And right now, Evil Jesus is looking very strong to take an inhibitor turret at 22 and a half minutes, or 23 minutes. Yeah, and Libic is dead. He's just got <laughs> hooked in there. Frog and dives in on top of him. This inhibitor turret is a goner. There's no way they're saving that one. EG do decide to back off as they throw another shock blast out there. And I hate to break it to you, Jason, but it's cats that have nine lives. Ari has nine tails. That is true. Thank you, Joe, for that for that hit for, I was gonna say history <laughs> lesson. I'm like, wait, that's not right. But anyways, Evil Genesis, they're gonna go for Dragon right off of that. That will be the third of their game and they're gonna be back with quite a bit of gold. I mean Froggen, two thousand gold. You see Snoopy. 1200 gold. You look at Yellow Pete, 12, or 1400 gold, and even Crepo sitting on, well, he was sitting on 1000 gold as he already bought up some items here, and they're only gonna come back even stronger, and they have an open inhibitor to contest. Yellow Pete gonna get himself some extra farm down here at the bottom. Two last whispers in there. We can say what armor oh. when we talk about that. Yeah, this is dangerous for Yellow Pete. Actually manages to avoid quite a lot as a DFG comes down. Yellow Pete trying his best. He's already used that barrier. Charu actually underneath the tower. And look at the damage he's managed to do on them. Snoopy comes in but can't quite finish off. Not got the damage for that. And Yellow Pete, I tell you what, in a 2v1 there against uh, against Alessandra and an Ari with a DFG, he actually did really well. I think if his ultimate was available at that time because it came up right as he died, he would have actually won that, but now Makla going head-to-head against Froggen here. Yeah, and Makla is going to use his barrier from this one. Froggen going low, but he's surviving the minions here, hammering on him, but he is going to stay alive from that one he had. Well, he's got 30 HP right now, so it must have been down to about 15 after that fight. Very, very close encounter. That Dorn's played in 6% life still saved his life. Great job of him. Just keep attacking. And Makla, though, even, I mean, he has a lot of CS, 186 right now, pretty much even with Froggen, but he doesn't have the same score as him, and he was still almost able to kill Froggen. That just shows how strong Macklear is as a player. I mean, he flashed out of that Shock Blast and how strong his champion currently is. So, things going to calm down here for a second. I mean, an action-packed first 25 minutes, 8 2 in kills, 8 approaching 10,000 gold lead right now. They're about three, 400 gold off of that right, uh, that mark right now. As Froggen here is going to spot himself a Kubon. Is he going to go for this one? Not many people there. He's asked, I think he's pinging there to Crepo to check with wards that if anyone's actually around that corner. And here is Kubon. He's recalling, but he's oh, not. What? Oh, he's missed the shock blast. He's going to get locked down as well. And Froggen, he's going to feel that he's made a bit of a dirt from that one. But Wicked won't make the same mistake. And Froggen's second shock blast hits the mark. Here come the rest of Meet Your Makers though, but it's only Wicked caught out of position and he doesn't care. EG are at the backside here. Are they going to go for the fight? The tidal wave comes across. Wicked is going to go down. Crepo starts to walk away as the shock blast forces Meet Your Makers off and that ends in a one for one. Yeah, it was unfortunate for them, but, he, uh, but Yellow Pete was bottom. He was pushing this lane up. If he was there, they could have won that fight pretty easily, but he should be able to take this bottom inner turret and give them a little bit of extra gold so that one death that Wicked took for the team is going to end up working out for them. And that's why I think EG stood there but didn't really do too much whilst Wicked was being hammered away on. They wanted to make sure that Meet Your Makers stayed away from this bottom lane as quickly as possible. They were kind of like, do we do damage? Do we do we run away from this one? Uh, but they stuck there. They stopped Meet Your Makers from being able to instantly recall after that one and stop it. Uh, Pete doing quite a good bit of damage down onto that bottom turret. And here comes Froggen once again. Rest of uh, EG are there. Makata caught in the <laughs> middle of No Man's Land. He's flung around all over the place. Snoopy finishes off. Here comes comes Wicked with the teleport as well. I think for the entirety that he was alive right there, he didn't have control of his champion for nope. half a second or even quarter of a second. And with that kill, they're going to go in for this inhibitor. And I can't really see Meet Your Makers being able to hold on to it either. You can see how fast it's going down with Yellow Pete and Froggen hammering away on that one. And that is the first inhib of the game. 26 minutes, 45 seconds in. And there is that 10,000 gold lead coming out for Evil Geniuses. And now, what's the next move for them? They have the Baron as a very high potential. I don't believe they actually have an Oracle on them currently. Yes, Crepo actually does. So I'm wrong on that one. But 
they could actually bait MYM into going towards Baron and picking up a kill here. They're all set up for it perfectly. Charo, look at him. He's actually like suspecting this is going to happen. He's setting up towards that top side in that bush, uh, trying to watch out for it. And right now, Olivic, not actually going to spot them. I think he did see them as they left the bush, but that was very close. Oh, shot blast coming through there onto Makata. Wicked and Co get back into the brush. They may very well go for this one. Yellow Peak getting a little bit caught out, gets bubbled. Actually getting ulted here as well. He's in a lot of trouble, but he's still alive, crucially. He's at the back and he's going to be hammering in there. There's the shutdown onto Snoopy, but the rest of them might be in trouble. Box down from Crepo. Froggen is still going in. He, come, he goes forward, Libic on this one, who's low, low, low. Hit there with a piercing arrow. Froggen now unstoppable. He thought about going for Mackler as well, but then came to his senses, EG back off, and like you said, they could have Baron here. Yeah, and I mean, they have easily the opportunity to take it with Makati down, with Kuban down, with Libic down, they easily can go for it, but they're going to take the safe route. They're going to back, yeah, they're uh, going to go buy up, because they have a lot of gold to spend. They don't need it right now, that's the thing. It's It would be a nice thing to have in there without a shadow of a doubt, but a necessity here? Probably not, as we see some big items coming in. Runic Bulwark for Snoopy. Locket of the Iron Solari, picked up by Krepos. A few pink wards coming out there. There is the Cutlass for Jace here as well for Frog. And there was a pickaxe picked up as well for Yellow Pete. He's headed straight up towards the Infinity Edge. And you look over at both these sides in terms of the 80 carries. Yellow Peak compared to Mackler. You have two completed items, almost a third with an Infinity Edge as his uh, next item for Yellow Pete. And then Mackler, all he has is that IE. That just shows like how much uh, Yellow Pete's been farming, even though he's down quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, not that much, but he's been around the map. He has three kills, has six assists. They have three dragons behind them, and they've been just pretty much storing up this gold, using it to their advantage. And right now, EG, just like I said, they're like, we don't need Baron. They're looking for another fight. They are looking for a fight, and rightly so. Is Snoopy going to catch Mackler out here? Of course, he does have that rocket jump. Probably just going to save it for as long as he can as the piercing arrow comes through. Time to jump, my friend. He does go out. There is the unstoppable force right on the turret. <laughs> Froggen from the side, securing the kill from distance with his shot blast. That sniper right there. I mean, showing why he is 100% win rate on Jace, 2 out of 2 games, sitting at 6-1 yeah. and 3 right now. His items are ridiculous, no one can really withstand that damage. And right now, Evil Jace is going to push for this inner turret. They can push for the next one, because they have Super Minions pushing that middle lane. And they do decide to back off. There's another Dragon opportunity for them. And are going to be making sure that they pick up that gold. No chances here for Meteor Makers, that's what it is all about here. Okay, they probably don't need a Dragon at this stage of the game, but better to have it themselves than it to go over the other side. Finished off with ease, and they're going to back off once again. I'm guessing they're sat on another good chunk of gold to spend 1,800 for Frog and 1,300 for Wicked. That's a good seven, uh, sorry, eight, 900 in there for Yellow Pete as well. So all valuable items going to be coming up once again here. Yeah. Lots of boots and mobility all over there. And a Shirelli is coming out for Wicked. Yeah, for Wicked, I, I'm kind of confused by that one. I mean, I can see how it's obviously going to work out. That cooldown reduction with the Spirit Vistage is going to help so he can use his ultimate a lot more. And also gives that extra bit of speed just for that engaged uh, since that unstoppable force is really such a high impact ultimate for their team right now just to set up the entirety of that fight. And right now, even Jesus looks like they're just going to push out their lanes and then group up for another fight or group up for a push here or maybe even towards Baron, which they're currently set at, or maybe just denying the vision. Maybe they just want to make Meteor Makers have to check this and then force them into a fight. Well, that's the thing right now. If if EG end up luring MYM in, it's going to be very hard for Meteor Makers to turn and run from it. Two Blade of the Ruin Kings in there. The Shirelias as well for Evil Geniuses. You don't escape from that. And the Acceleration Gate on Jace. And the Acceleration Gate, yeah. That's without even going into the spell that's going to give them a massive spoopy, yeah. uh, speed boost as well. And yeah, you're exactly right. And MYM, they're, they're pretty much stuck. Like, what's the least bad decision we can make right now in terms of, do we leave the base to go look for Baron? Do we start face checking bushes and potentially walk into an entirety, uh, entire team of Evo Geniuses? And EG know this. They're using this to their advantage. They're taking away everything they possibly can from Meteor Makers. And looks like MYM, this is their this is their move right here. Well, Makata starts to come through. He's got a ward down. And look at that. Krepo's actually right in the middle of them here. Snoopy going to dive in there as well. Box goes down. They've killed off Kuban. Charu is going very low from this one as well. And it looks like Meteor Makers could well start to clear things up. Libic will die. Makla being focused here as he gets slowed down by the annoyance that is that Malphite. Goes inside the brush. Not going to matter. Yellow Peep finishes that off. That's four kills for EG, losing just the support. And they still have 30 seconds on pretty much everyone for MYM. They can go for the final push here, and it looks like they're going to do it. 
They're starting to group up for this inhibitor. That's gonna go down. They still yep. have three. Or they still have two super minions with them. They can tank those turrets and they can finish this game right they now. They can Joe. win the game right now. Makata's got 10 seconds. The AD carry not coming up for 30. Charu's pushing the top lane. I think they realize that this one is gonna be over as Evil Genius has pushed through here. The Nexus is going to fall and they take down Meteor Makers, looking like a completely different team to what we're used to seeing.